Okay, a little preview. Uh, I think I want to show the um, the one where we have a ancestor query. This is cool. Then maybe we'll come back to the data store exercise. All right, so let's see this run first, so we can sort of see what it does. So this is an app engine, so I use go app serve instead of go run main. We're going to see app engine. And then it's going to, when you run app engine, it's at local 8080. So there it's firing up, it takes a moment. Cool. Sorry. <laughs> Let me clear these guys out. So you could go to localhost 8000 and it's like a replication of the data store, but on your development machine. And here are all the animals I've created. I'm going to just delete them. And I also have eight. I'm going to delete that because that's associated with the animals. All right, so now I could come here and refresh. I won't have any data there. I could enter an animal, so a dog, warm, fuzzy creature. I hit enter, <clears throat> and why didn't that refresh? But if I hit refresh, so it takes a second. I don't know why that is. They talk about latency, uh, in, you know, being just not consistent to the millisecond. That's just how. NoSQL works. So um, that's something for me to kind of look at and figure out how to do it. But when I enter a dog, then I can come over here and I can look at uh, my entity kind and uh, list the entities. I don't know why those are still, oh, those are words. Get rid of those. I want animal, list entity. So there's dog, warm, fuzzy creature. I just entered that in my NoSQL database. Cat, snotty and aloof. <laughs> Refresh the page. Finally, it's there. I could also overwrite cat. Uh, okay, animal. Somewhat cool and distant. <coughs> so refresh. <clears throat> and uh, rat poops on patio. Refresh, and then I could come up here and I could put in like uh, I just want to look at cat, and so I could just see cat, and the animal, the animal, this animal just ate chicken, and then I come back to cat. Ooh, the animal's already eaten chicken, or it has eaten fish. Come back to cat. So this is like a user with blog posts, or a user with picture posts. Whoa. Right, and if I look over here, I can see my animals, and I come over here and see what did they eat, and list it. And it's associating which animal ate what. I don't have to keep track of that, it does it. And so from that, that's like, you got a unique key, you've got data storage, you can now like, you know, have user accounts with username and password, you, they log in, you can check does that match anything in my data storage, if it does, cool, I can set a cookie with a unique ID, you're now logged in, you have access to all of this stuff over here, 
right? And I could start pulling out their personal information and building pages around that. So the code for that is uh, 530205. But just to give you a little preview of it, there's no main function when we use App Engine because Google's App Engine actually uses main. So we use init for initialize. That runs before main if we just want to initialize something. So we're initializing our routes. And uh, I have two routes, handle animals and eight process, you know, when they ate something. I have two structs, an animal struct, and then an eight struct, what they ate. And then handle animals. Get rid of this. All right? If the request URL path is not equal to forward slash, then I'm going to split the path. So anything that would be like when I did cat, right here, right? This is the domain. This is the request URL's path. This is, uh, if I split on that, like if I take this as a string, like if I had more stuff here, right, and I split this string on those, I'm going to have a word right there. Like that's going to be my first word. Position zero, zero-based index. Here's at position one. Position two, position three, position four. So here in my code, I'm asking, hey, string split the request URL path, split on that slash, and give me what's at position one. Cat. So we saw this with Toby, the dog picture. And uh, and so if uh, and that gives me the term, the cat or the dog or whatever. <laughs> and then I pass into show animal that term along with my response and my request. So if I look at show animal, you have to use something called a context in App Engine. And the context is basically a bundle of data. You might call it an opaque variable, opaque because you can't see into it. It's just a bundle of data that App Engine uses to sort of keep track of users and, you know, sessions. Right, and who's logged in, who's not. And so you just have that pretty much at the beginning of everything. Context sort of helps unlock a lot of functionality and other things. You don't need to understand context other than, okay, it's this variable that you know is used to help keep track of a bunch of stuff by Google and sessions, because we're using App Engine. And so we're abstracting away some of the difficult low-level things of creating sessions and stuff, and it's all abstracted into that bundle called context. So we create an app engine new context. It requires the request. And, uh, and then we do a new key. There's a new key and there's new incomplete key. And the key is like, you know, the key to storing things in data store. So here's, uh, here's for eight. And I have an ID. And I could have also had a key name. But I'm only using ID. So with eight, I'm just getting ready to some logging I did earlier because it wasn't working. It was a really obvious error <laughs> that I didn't see for like two hours <laughs> until Daniel's like, uh, your food item's lowercase, which means it's not exported. I was like, oh! <laughs> I'm like, it's totally working. It's just not writing it to the dashboard. I'll make that capitalize. It'll work. That's awesome. Why didn't I see that? So here, though, I did an incomplete key. And I passed in, uh, so incomplete key, and it creates the key for me. So Google creates the unique ID. So that's with eight. And so that gave me that. But with animal, right, there's not an ID here. There's not an ID there. It's just these, right? Because with animal, I gave it. When I created an animal, I gave it a new key, and I gave it a term. So there's new key, where I am saying this is going to be the unique key to identify this record. 
And record is a database term, but whatever. I should call it entity. It's a new key to identify this entity, which I'm storing. And, uh, and I could use either a string or I could use a number. If you look at the definition for new key, creates a new key, uh, either one or both of string ID and int ID must be zero. If both are zero, the key return is incomplete. So if I want to say I'm creating a key, I have to either give it a string or an int. And then that will be the key by which I look up this record slash entity. Now, if you're like me and you've had experience with databases, it takes a little bit of time to sort of think about how does NoSQL work, but this little presentation, this little schema thing works, helps me. Uh, data store. Or you could just let, so that's a new key where I'm saying this is the key. You could do a new incomplete key and pass that to App Engine and it will complete the key for you and just randomly give you a unique number. So if you want to like, I'm storing user information, let me just use a key that associates it all with their email address. Right, that's unique. But unless somebody mistyped it, then that might create problems, right? Uh, but it, uh, so you just, that's just like you got to figure that out, right? Figure out how you want to set it up. So this is how you you talk about database tables, relational databases, or tables, records, and fields. In NoSQL, you say kinds into these properties, and those, in my mind, translate straight across. <laughs> Though anybody that you talk to that's a NoSQL Nazi, I don't think that's the best word to use. Anybody that you talk to that's a NoSQL fanatic, fundamentalist, that's a better one. They will they will not like that you use the comparison between tables and kinds. So are there relationships like there are between <laughs> So this would be like if I had a table employee and a record E1 and fields name role hire date in a relational database in NoSQL, I would have an employee kind. I would have an entity E1. I would have properties, name, role, hire, date, and account. So to me, it's like straight across. But I'm asking again, are there relationships between oh, the yeah. kind like there are between? No, it's schemaless. Yeah. So there's no relationships between kinds. Even though they may have an equivalent layout as far as items, they're not relationships. That's the whole idea. They're yeah. document based. Yeah. So there's no schema. SQL databases have a schema. This is how they work, right? You have to define everything before you use it. If you want to change it, you got to change it for all the records in that table. You know, no SQL is schemaless. You want to change the way you know uh, kinds are being stored. Just go ahead and change it. You just got to know how to work with it. So uh, we were at. Right here, show animal, and with show animal, I get a new key. And so new key kind of went, at first that kind of threw me. Because I, I want to show the animal, why am I creating a key, right? But every time you run the new key method, then it's going to give you that key for that thing, right? Yeah, you create a new key. Like I created this key here when I stored this one animal, so maybe in, you know the the it would be dog would be there because term is a variable, so maybe the value of term in this case is dog, right? So I created a key when I when I stored dog, and now I'm going to recreate this key for dog because I want to access dog, and then I'm going to use that key to access it. So then I create a uh, variable called entity of type animal and uh, here's the type animal it's a struct with species and description so a variable called entity of type animal and uh, let's list animals show animal and then here to get something from the data store it's data store get give it the context give it the key right this is what I want to get and uh, Give it, uh, give it the address of a struct, so pointer to a struct, which uh, 
it dumps the values into because I, I had that pointer to struct when I stored it and I just pass the same thing back when I want to get it and puts all the values right back in it. And then that entity is ready to use. So entity species, entity description. Show it right here. So that's like a preview. Well, you could jump into GitHub and look at that code, but you got the template right there for using data store, for getting stuff, putting stuff. You could see how it's done. There's a little bit to wrap your head around there, right? Like one of the things is how did that get thing work? You know, if you go look at the documentation, this you absolutely need to know. So uh, Google, go app engine. You go to app engine, just Google go app engine. And then here's like the tutorial for App Engine, how App Engine works. FYI for App Engine, you can use Python, Java, PHP, or Go. Uh, worst choice, uh, toss up <laughs> for second place. Best choice, the proselytizer in me, sorry. And then you go to Go. And in here, right, we have different services. And so one of the services is uh, Data Store. No, it's up here under Storing Data. And then inside data store, we have the reference. And so that's where your documentation is. And you come down to your documentation, and you can say, okay, how does that get thing work? Data store get. So I mess that up. I just delete some. That's right. Uh, so data store get right here. Click on it. Git loads the entity stored for K into DST. So K, I think maybe what that was originally K, because I don't see a K up there. Into destination interface, which must be a struct pointer or implement property load saver. You don't want to have to implement that on your own. So just use a struct pointer for all your data that you're going to store. Create a struct and give it a pointer to that. Create a struct, then create a variable of that type struct, and then you create a, a pointer to your variable and pass that in. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm done. It looks so much better than using PHP and SQL with the MySQL query command and all that. Oh, this looks way better. Way simpler. Though. Cool. Yeah, right? Like, to be able to interact with a really powerful NoSQL database, that's, like, super simple. Hey. Yeah, it didn't look as complicated as putting like selects, select statements like inside of quotes, inside of parentheses. And yeah, and, and so for the select stuff, right? Like here's a here's a filter, and uh, you know we're doing a query and we're just filtering. Give me all the terms greater than or equal to C and less than E, and then order it by term. Yeah, and the way that query thing works in the documentation is uh, you create a new query, and it returns a pointer to a query, which means all these methods are available. And when you use any of these methods, like you saw new query and then filter, right? When I use filter, it returns a pointer to a query. So if you think about like, hey, I create something and it gives me this object, and if that's a variable, I could then run this method off of that, right? I, I could just keep chaining these together, you know, because this gave me a pointer to a query, and because I have a pointer to a query, this is one of the methods of a pointer to query, so I could use that, but when I run that, it gives me a pointer to query, so now because I have a pointer to a query, I could use another one of those methods, so I'll use this one, and that gave me a pointer to query, so now I have a pointer to a query, and so I could use this method on it, Right, so you could just keep dot 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 all the little pieces together. So I could just use order, I could use filter, I could use ancestor, which means, hey, give me all of Kai's posts. Now give me all the Kai's posts from yesterday or something. So you're uh, yeah, you're uh, running a query on the query result again. Yeah. I remember when I was in the data class, they brought up. I don't remember if I have the terminology. If I remember the terminology correctly, but they had like a data grid view and like a data grid set or something, and 
they were like making a big deal to remember like every table or every time you run a query it returns like a data grid or something. And it was just a way of teaching it to us so that we remember I don't know, basically you run a query, you get some results, you could run a query on the results. That that works perfectly with Blue Path logic. So you can keep on running a query on the results you get. Yeah, kind of, but it figures it all out. It's not like you had to get the results and then get the results and then get the results. It does it all on the server and just gives you the results once, so it's efficient. All right, so that's a food for thought and big preview, but, you know, some big steps. And the thing to take away from today isn't the data store stuff. That's the preview stuff. But just like uh, setting cookies, getting cookies, getting rid of fav icon. Doing a session, you know, with a UUID, the login, log out. I really recommend trying to do the login, log out, or look at this code here on GitHub. All right. And uh, we'll see you guys on Tuesday. It's good times. So make sure you come to DevFest this weekend. Okay. Fresno City College starts at. Schedule, yeah, 9 a.m. You guys are just saying all that. Was that too much for you guys today? That was awesome. That was pretty, that was really, that was right. it, it did look like a lot of stuff when you were demonstrating, like, the, the cat eating stuff. Like, that was a lot of code that I haven't written yet, but in general, I could keep up with it all. It was, it was awesome. I think today was awesome, especially the cookie stuff. That stuff was awesome. Cool.